Hello, true health seeker. Have you ever thought about becoming a health coach? Do you love learning about nutrition and how we can shift our lifestyle and our diet so that we can gain optimal health and happiness and longevity? Do you love helping your friends and family to solve their health problems and to figure out what they can do to eat healthier? Are you interested in becoming someone who can uh, grow their own business, support people in their success? Do you love helping people? You might be the perfect candidate to become a health coach. I highly recommend checking out the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I just spent the last year in their health coaching certification program and it really blew me away. It was so amazing. I learned over a hundred dietary theories. I learned all about nutrition, but from a standpoint of how we can help people to shift their life and shift their lifestyle to gain true holistic health, I definitely recommend you check them out. You can Google Institute for Integrative Nutrition or IIN and give them a call or you can go to learntruehealth.com slash coach and you can receive a free module of their training to check it out and see if it's something that you'd be interested in. Be sure to mention my name, Ashley James, in the Learn Your Health podcast because I made a deal with them that they will give you the best price possible. I highly recommend checking it out. It really changed my life to be in their program and I'm such a big advocate that I wanted to spread this information. We need more health coaches. In fact, health coaching is the largest growing career right now in the health field. So many health coaches are getting in and helping people because you can work in chiropractic offices, doctor's offices, you can work in hospitals, you can work online through Skype and help people around the world. You can become an author, you can go into the school system and help the, the your local schools shift their uh, programs to help children be healthier. You can go into senior centers and, and help them to shift their diet and lifestyle to best support them in their success and their, their health goals. There's so many different available options for you when you become a certified health coach. So check out IAN, check out the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, mention my name, get the best deal, give them a call and they'll give you lots of free information and, and help you to uh, see if this is the right move for you. Classes are starting soon. The next uh, round of classes are starting at the end of the month. So you're going to want to call them now and check it out. And if you know anyone in your life who would be an amazing coach, please tell them about it. Being a health coach is so rewarding and you get to help so many people. Have a fantastic day and enjoy this amazing interview. Welcome to the Learn True Health Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 328. Today is a really special interview. We have with us Cassie Johnson, who is now a holistic health coach. And when she started listening to the show, and she has amazing testimonial, amazing story about her, her seeking holistic health and healing some issues she's had in her health for a long time. And what's really cool is that now she can come on the show and share her experience. And, you know, I launched the podcast less than three years ago, so it's been pretty recent. Cassie, it's really exciting to hear what you have done. You've transformed so many health issues in your life in a matter of a few years. It's really, really exciting because those who are listening who are suffering from chronic adrenal fatigue, from Lyme disease, from Hashimoto's, from hormone issues, the list goes on and on. These chronic illnesses that we just beat our heads against a wall when we go to regular doctors and they're like, here, have the pill, go home. Like there's no, they don't, doesn't seem like there's any answers out there. And then, and then we start listening to podcasts like the Learn to Health podcast and we start hearing from all these experts who regularly help people heal. And it opens up our mind to this possibility that our bodies can heal when we um, figure out what the body actually needs. And that's the big question. So Cassie, you have done some amazing work healing your body in the last few years. 
I'd love for you to share your story. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I am so glad to be here and I am definitely so excited to share my story with you. Absolutely. Now, before we hear the after, we want to hear the before. So can you paint that picture? What was your health like before you found the Learn Child podcast? What happened in your life and what were the health issues you were dealing with? Yeah. So um, I do want to say I actually started listening to the show only a year ago. Wow. So cool. uh it's been a huge transformation in just one short year. Uh, and about a year ago, I got um, hormone, um, I got all of my hormones tested um, because I had been having struggles with my health since I was about 13 years old at age 13 when all the other girls were going through puberty. Uh, I was not, and I was just getting terrible migraines and no one ever thought that it would be my hormones. So, um, went throughout high school and had one period at age 16. And then at age 17, I started getting some tests run because again, I had only had one period and I started breaking out all over my chin and on my cheeks. And um, still, the doctor, my mom took me to her OBGYN. The doctor did not test my sex hormone levels. They just tested my growth hormone. And then they did an ultrasound to see if I had any cysts on my ovaries. And everything looked fine. So they put me on the pill and mm -hmm. an antibiotic for my acne. And I was on that off and on for five years <gasps> of my life. Oh, my gosh. Until, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, five years until age 22, when I was struggling with acne still, I still had not had another period. And my digestion was terrible. I started getting digestion issues at age 20, maybe. And I finally decided to get my hormones tested after my mom kept prompt me, prompting me to do so. And they came back, um, my estrogen and progesterone levels came back post-menopausal at age 22 Whoa. years old. Yeah. Wow. So uh, that was a bit of a shock for me. It was a huge wake up call for me. And uh, my doctor told me to go back on the pill and I refused because I knew that it was synthetic hormone and it was not helping me whatsoever. And I wanted to figure out the root cause of this issue. So that is when I found your podcast. So how did you and find it? Were you just like searching <laughs> I or got Googling? So lucky, or? Basically, <laughs> well, I just opened, I literally just opened the podcast app and I typed in health. <laughs> and you came up <laughs> Yay. and I had, I was not into podcasts before that either. I just was like, you know what? I'm going to start like poking around, found the learn true health podcast. And I just like started looking through your um, different topics and I was like, Whoa, like I want to listen to all of this. So I just started binging. <laughs> but the first episode I listened to, you had, just um, recently dropped it and it was talking about eczema and acne and that was the main reason that I wanted to heal at the time was literally for my acne you know I was 22 years old female like I that's all I was thinking about was my looks so I started listening to your show and realizing that it does I don't have to go back on medication and I shouldn't go back on medication and and that food is just this powerful medicine. Mm. And so I just kept listening, um, went off of the birth control and my antibiotic started breaking out terribly. But your podcast gave me so much hope during that time. And I found uh, Nicole Jarman's interview with you. And she was talking about natural ways to balance your hormones. So mm -hmm. I actually ended up taking her uh, fix your period course and she covered a lot of different hormone imbalances 
that helped me eventually get to the root of my hormone imbalance, which was the fact that my ovaries just weren't working considering I did not have any sex hormones, progesterone or estrogen, and my testosterone was pretty low as well. So I figured out it was my ovaries. And since then, I've taken action to help boost my hormone levels naturally through food and through herbal remedies and through acupuncture and a variety of other techniques. But I got my hormones tested about two months ago. And my estrogen has risen to normal levels and my progesterone is up. It's not at normal levels yet, but it's definitely increased significantly and my acne is getting so much better. So it's just been such an amazing experience to, to see the results of all of the hard work that I've been putting into my health. Absolutely. I mean, look at that contrast going to an MD and I really want to preface this by saying, that I um, appreciate allopathic MD medicine and it has its place. And I believe that drugs when needed are, can be like miracles, right? Like we really, really, really want a drug that's going to save our life. And I think that that's, that is when we should use them. Absolutely. Um, But this over prescription, this like knee jerk reaction to just put someone on medication, the second their body is a little bit out of balance what is going on? And it's so sad that medical doctors, you know, this is their training and they don't, your medical doctors all through your teens didn't stop to ask why, why? And they, like you said, they didn't even test your sex hormone levels when you weren't having a period by, you know, by the time you were 16, you had one period. It's just kind of maddening. And, you know, this is, this is the frustration that here we are 2019 and doctors are still, you know, many of them are clueless around, around what to do to support healthy hormone levels. Like this is crazy, but I love that you advocated for yourself and you took matters into your own hands and you educated yourself. And I think we all, we all need to do that. We can't just um, leave our health to a doctor and completely go blind and let them take the wheel. They're the expert. Doctors are experts, but we're the expert of our own body and we have to listen to our body and then, and then seek a team of experts, you know, not just one doctor, but, but continually seek a team to build a team. And I love that. That's what you're doing now. You're seeing an acupuncturist and um, you're taking courses and you're learning from all these experts and you're bringing it in and testing it out on yourself. And only in a matter of months, changing your diet and using food, as medicine and using supplements as well, you supported your body to start to come back into balance. And, you know, look, look at your life a year from now, it's going to be your progesterone levels will be amazing. But it's cool because you now in now you're, you know, you're in your 20s. And you have now learned something that some people aren't learning till their 50s or their 60s, which is um, how to listen to the body and and how to bring the body back into balance with with, uh, by, by, by supporting the body with what it needs. So this is like, so cool what you're going through. And now I know that, um, I remember you told me that you went back and listened to previous episodes. That's why I thought you maybe started at the beginning, um, that you kind of binge listened, uh, to a bunch of the episodes to catch up and and continue learning. But at some point you went, I want to do this to help others. Like, can you take us to that moment? Did you have like an aha moment where you realized that you wanted to help other people, other women gain their health back as well? Yeah. Um, well, you talk a lot about IIN on the show and it's kind of funny because my mom actually did IIN in 2016 And I had, she was like, Cassie, you should, you should go do this. You should go do this. And in my head, I was getting a degree from a good university and was like, no, like I, I have this degree, I'm going to go use it and just kind of ignored her. And then started hearing you talk about IIN. And I was like, mom, like this, this school IIN sounds really cool. (laughs) And she was like, Cassie, I literally just finished at IIN and I, (laughs) felt terrible that I had not been listening to her. Like that's how much I had zoned out 
not paid attention to what she was trying to tell me. But when she told me that, she started talking to me about it. And every single episode that you mentioned it in, I was like, wow, this just sounds right up my alley. Like I am, as I continued to change my diet and change my atmosphere and Mm. change the way I handled stress, I started seeing benefits immediately. And every single day I was just feeling so much better and so much better. So it was probably three months in to my healing journey in March of this year when I was like, okay, I want to do IIN. And even if it's just for myself, that's awesome. And if it turns into coaching, well, that would be really cool too. I I wasn't sure at the time what I was going to do with it, but probably about a month into IIN, I was hooked and I was like, this is, this is it. I'm going to be a coach. (laughs) I love the program. And I just became so incredibly passionate about it. That is so cool. So, um, have you haven't graduated, have you graduated or the, no. okay, you've almost completed. So uh, just, just to let listeners know who maybe haven't heard um, me share about it in a past episode, um, six months into the 12 month program in IIN, which is an online program to become a health coach, uh, you take, you start taking on clients. And so even though you haven't graduated, you still are, you're starting to work with people. How's that going for you? Yes, I have recently started working with people and I am absolutely loving it. I love the coaching philosophy that IIN uses and it allows me to go into my uh, coaching calls very relaxed and it's very client driven. Mm -hmm. So you, it's all about giving the person space, like all anybody wants is to be listened to and Mm -hmm. it really, really helps them to work out their issues on their own. And you kind of just be there to guide them and ask them the right questions. And I'm just having so much fun with that. I love being the gardener and planting the seeds rather than the mechanic and trying to fix people. It's (laughs) it's just a lot of fun for me. That's awesome. Because ultimately, it's sort of like your mom was saying, you should do it. And it's like, you know, when someone's trying to be the mechanic in your life, we kind of resist that. But when someone's being the gardener, right? And so it's like the yes, perfect example. You couldn't yeah. hear your mom because she was being the mechanic. But when you're exactly. the gardener and you start asking the right questions, then um, then p- people will respond more to when they, the ideas come to them. But they need a sounding board and we need to get out of our own heads. And I love that you're loving IIN because I had the same experience. I would have done it for the personal growth alone. It was so it was such a wonderful experience. And then on top of that, be, to learn a new tool set to help people was really cool. Now you said that in the last year you've changed your diet, your environment, and how you handle stress. Can you talk a bit about the diet? Um, for, I want to go through all three things. What have you changed? And of course, I don't believe in one diet diet dogma. I really believe that everyone needs to learn what their body needs. So um, whether you do testing like IG, the IgA, IgG, and IgE blood testing to give you an understanding of what your immune system is reacting to so you can avoid those foods or whether you do a food and mood journal or and to listen to your body and, and, and figure out whether you feel really good eating you know, a sweet potato or you feel really good eating broccoli uh, and and dilating in that way. But everyone, you know, there's one person that could be vegan, another person that could be paleo, you know, and both can be thriving on that diet. So the diet that you're about to share, I just want to let people know that um, it's about making these changes and listening to our body. But I'd love to know what diet changes did you make that you saw results and what were the results that you saw? Yeah. Um, so before I say what I changed, I do want to note that before I made these changes, I thought I was eating healthy. I <laughs> thought I knew what, what eating healthy was, um, but it I was not. I actually had this terrible problem of restricting heavily on mm. the weekdays and binging terribly on the weekend. So I would eat really healthy on the weekdays, but I would also just follow all of these rules, these diet rules that put the power in the diet rather than the power into listening to my own body. And then I would go and 
just completely, uh, you know, let go of all caught like through caution to the wind over the weekend. And it was terrible for my metabolism at the time. I, I didn't even realize I was doing it until I started this health journey. And I, as I learned how to listen to my body, I, de- uh, the biggest changes I made, I would say, were just incorporating more vegetables. It's it, That was the <laughs> first most simple change for me, just eating more vegetables. And I started to feel so much better within days of doing that. And then I started a food and mood journal, just like you mentioned, Yay. and found the foods that made me feel the best, at what times of the day they made me feel best. And then it also made me pay attention to why I was eating. Was I actually hungry Mm -hmm. or was I eating because I was stressed or because I was bored? You know, what was it in my environment that was, um, you know, prompting me or triggering me to eat? So it was a huge, um, the food and mood journal, I would definitely recommend. It was a very easy way to understand my eating habits. Um, And then after I started implementing more vegetables, I just started experimenting with uh, different kinds of carbs. I was pretty much low, like no carb, low carb last uh, last year. And so implementing more grains, cutting out gluten and um, yeah, and then incorporating supplements as well. That was actually a, uh, a huge benefit for me during all of these changes. I had very, very low energy and supplements gave me that boost I needed to um, make it through the day. I didn't realize this, but as I was going through that process, I gave up caffeine and I just completely was mopping myself up off the floor by the end of the day. And so um, incorporating supplements along with all of the vegetables really, really helped to boost my energy levels. Awesome. I want to talk about the supplements. Um, but first I wanted to ask, so you changed your diet and uh, you mentioned going gluten-free and, you know, adding tons of more vegetables. How much, how much more vegetables would you say you added, um, like two cups at each meal, or can you give us sort of a quantity of how, how much vegetables you now eat? Yeah. Um, so Before, I would say I would get a salad at lunch and then like one cup of vegetables at dinner. And now I have probably like three cups of vegetables in the morning. Well, two cups of vegetables, three cups of vegetables in the morning, a huge salad at lunch. And then my dinners are usually plant based as well. They um, you know, my the biggest portion of my food is vegetables at dinner. So I don't do much many snacks, but all of my meals are plant based. Can you tell me um, what's your favorite salad? So when you go to make a big salad for lunch, what do you put in it that sustains you energy wise throughout the day? Yeah, I eat the same salad every day <laughs> and I love it. OK, I want your uh, recipe. <laughs> Yeah, so I eat, um, I do spinach, and then I'll put all kinds of different colored vegetables on there. I love having a variety of colors in my salad, so bell pepper, onion, carrot, cucumber, Um, and then I really like adding olives and um, banana peppers to it to give it kind of like a pickled flavor. I'll also add avocado. Um, The fiber in there definitely makes me feel satiated and full. And then I'll add, I usually do beans and quinoa on top to get me a complete protein. But I found that eating meat at lunch actually really, um, it decreases my energy levels and I feel kind of just blah afterwards. So Mm -hmm. I like to have a vegan lunch. Um, And then I'll do some balsamic vinegar and some lime and some pepper. Nice. And I think that's it. Yeah. Yummy. Yummy. Very cool. Um, I always love, you know, when people think salad, they think romaine lettuce and croutons and maybe some cheese. And it's like the farthest thing from a healthy salad. Healthy salads are like 20 different vegetables, just these colorful, gorgeous and popping with 
it, it's like candy, honestly. When I, the, the salads I make taste so sweet and so delicious from all the flavors of the vegetables that it's like candy. And I also cut up, I usually, um, I like to bake, I, I've said this on the show before, but I like to do once a week, I bake a ton of different kinds of yams and sweet potatoes, like even the purple sweet potatoes, which are full of antioxidants, um, and the sweet potatoes and the yams. And I bake a bunch of them, um, like at 400 for two hours. And then I cool them off, put them in the fridge. I don't even skin them. And then when I go to grab, I just go to grab one because the skin is like a little wrapper. So I don't have to put, you know, you don't have to put saran wrap on anything. I don't use that. Um, but I grab a sweet potato and then I peel it then. And so it's cold. So the peel just comes right off. It practically slips right out of the peel. And I usually will cut up half of a sweet potato and put that in my salad as well. Um, Ooh, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I, I love sweet potatoes too. And it's kind of funny. I'll actually have sweet potato as kind of like my dessert after my yes. salad, but I love the idea of putting yes. it on the salad. Right. And if you want a sweet potato dessert, take some baked sweet potato, put it in a food processor and put in a uh, raw cacao powder and, and just blend it. And if you want it to be a bit more liquid, cause that makes a really thick but if you want to be a bit more liquid, you could add some coconut milk if you wanted to or almond milk. Um, but that and you don't have to add any any sweetener at all just because sweet potatoes are sweet. <laughs> but that makes a delicious chocolate mousse. You can do the same with avocado or you could even add some avocado into it if you wanted to add some healthy fats. Um, but that makes a delicious mousse. And so I've even uh, served that to our three year old because I'm like, hey, I'm feeding him a vegetable. You know, <laughs> he's getting lots of beta carotene. <laughs> it's an orange vegetable. Um, and he thinks he's eating, you know, chocolate mousse for dinner. So it's a win win, but it's delicious. And it's, um, you know, it's full of antioxidants and it tastes like, uh, like a rich, you know, mousse that, that has sugar in it. It doesn't. So there's my, there's my sweet potato secret. <laughs> Oh, yes, that sounds so yummy. I love cacao. I put it in my smoothies. Mm. I try. I am obsessed with cacao. So I am definitely going to try that most likely tonight. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What um what do you normally put in your smoothies that, that sustains you through the day? I have been experimenting still. I uh, was putting I make sure to get some protein in there. So I was putting collagen in there. Um, and now I just found a really great vegan protein that I've been putting in there and it has pea protein and digestive enzymes mm. because uh, pea protein is a little bit hard on our digestion. Mm -hmm. So I found that finding a vegan protein with the digestive enzymes um, was really great and it tastes great. It has a nice vanilla flavor. Um, so I put that in there and I mix it up. I really like putting like fro frozen blueberries in there and some almond milk. And um, of course my longevity supplements, I put the, um, I use the tangy tangerine original, which is like a berry flavor. So my smoothie usually comes out like a vanilla berry flavor and it's delicious. Oh, fun. Yummy. I, I have, I, uh, I use the 2.0, uh, version of the, that, which is like a peach flavor in our smoothies. Um, uh, is there any reason why you choose the original over the peach one? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not a fun story, oh, but, no. um, I actually had SIBO, <laughs> um, back in, oh. I mean, I've had it for years. I didn't know it. And when I got on the longevity supplements, there is a prebiotic and a probiotic in the 2.0 and my SIBO got so bad. So that's now good. I just stay away. That's good. Cause you didn't know you had it. Yeah. Yeah. It ended up being this huge blessing in disguise because you know what? My SIBO was gone now and I would nice. have never figured out why my digestion was all messed up like I had IBS symptoms but I would have never figured out why I had IBS symptoms unless I started these supplements that's awesome and was um I know that you worked with Jen Saltzman at takeyoursupplements.com um she's like a really great supplement coach that helps people dial in exactly what supplement they need to be on was she the one that helped you figure out um, what was going on when you started to get those symptoms? 
She actually wasn't too sure what was going on either. Um, (laughs) We were working a lot together to try and figure it out. I want to say that I heard something on your show about SIBO and then I I know that's where I originally learned about it and then just started doing my own research and found that probiotics can obviously make it Mm -hmm. worse because it's basically bacteria, good bacteria in the wrong place. And every time I would take uh, the tangy tangerine, my stomach would start hurting. So I Mm. knew that it was the cause of it. I just wasn't sure why it didn't really click until my SIBO got really bad. So, um, so yeah, once, once we figured it out, uh, I was able to share all the information I knew with her so that if that ever happens to anyone else, she is yeah. now aware of it. I've been taking those supplements for seven years and I work actually using those supplements with all my clients. And that's the first time I've ever heard of that be a problem. So it is really rare. Um, and so SIBO, uh, can also be small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Sometimes it's small intestinal fungal overgrowth or candida, right? So it's basically a one of these little critters in the small intestines. And it can be a good bacteria or good, you know, critter um, in the wrong place, but it can also be an overgrowth of the bad critters in the small intestines. Um, and that's when eating a uh, prebiotics, so certain fibrous vegetables and root vegetables um, can also really disrupt and make the symptoms worse. So if someone's eating, like let's say they, this is why I say it's not like 100% of the population will improve, will get their health back from eating vegetables. There's like that 1% of the population that has, you know, small intestinal fungal overgrowth or bacterial overgrowth. And if they start eating, you know, two cups of vegetables at each meal, um, they might have a bad reaction, but it's what it is. It, what it's doing is uncovering the fact that they have this dysbiosis. They have this out of balance gut biome. And it's a really good thing to figure out that that's your problem and then work on solving it rather than, um, you know, avoiding seemingly really healthy foods like your whole life um, to mitigate those symptoms. So I love that you got to the root cause. That's really awesome. You figured out you had small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. How did you resolve it? How did you work to resolve it? Yeah, so I I went on the FODMAP diet. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing I did. And there's actually this really great app called uh, Monash University, Mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah, I bought that app too. Yeah, I think I might have heard that on your show. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but I downloaded that app. It was a lifesaver. And I went on the low FODMAP diet. And then I started taking an antimicrobial. So you have two options with SIBO. You can either take an antimicrobial or you can do an antibiotic. And what's funny is I actually got tested for SIBO. And there's two different types of um SIBO that they test for, basically two different kinds of bacteria. Mm. And my test came back negative. But I knew, I know my body and I know what symptoms um, come with SIBO. And I know what foods were making me uh, or causing pain. And so I started digging a little bit more into research and found that there is another type of SIBO called hydrogen sulfide. And this, they do not test for at the moment, or they might be coming out with tests now, Mm -hmm. but they did not test for that. So my test actually came back negative. I realized that I had hydrogen sulfide SIBO. So any foods high in sulfides, including eggs and kale and broccoli were the worst for me. So I had Mm. to ensure that I cut out all of those foods as well. Um, And because my test came back negative, my doctor did not feel comfortable putting me on the antibiotic and considering I had been on an antibiotic for five years for my acne, that was another reason we did not want to do that. (laughs) (laughs) Which antimicrobial did you go on? Um, It's called GI Synergy, I believe. And it was three months of that. And then at the end of it, my SIBO was 
so much better. It was definitely a process. The antibiotic, it's supposed to be gone within like 10 days, I believe, but the likelihood of it coming back is very common. Whereas the antimicrobial is a lot less like, um, it's, it's a slower process, but it's basically just a cleanse. Like the, the antimicrobial that I was on, anybody could do just as like a good, um, intestinal cleanse Mm -hmm. for themselves. So I went on that for three months. And then after that, I actually did another digestive or, or an herb that is good for digestion. And I just got off of that this month and don't have any symptoms of SIBO and SIBO has not come back. What's the the herb that you went on for the digestion? What's that? What's the herb that you just completed taking? It's actually from a company called Radiant Wonder. And they're an amazing, amazing company with a lot of different herbs for hormones and digestion. And the herb was a mix called Calm Digestion. But I can't tell you what's in it because there was a lot of different (laughs) herbs in there. Calm Digestion. Calm Digestion by Radiant Wonder. I just wanted to make sure we noted um, what you took. How did you discover the GI Synergy and the Radiant Wonder? Was there um, a particular person that you followed to discover that these would help? Yes. Uh, The GI Synergy was actually given to me by my doctor. Uh, She is an MD. She's not a functional medicine doctor, but she leans towards the functional medicine side. So they had herbs there. So I actually just bought that from my doctor that day that I found out that I had SIBO. And the Radiant Wonder, I really don't know how my mom stumbled upon them. She, it, I, she swears it just like popped up on her computer. <laughs> but they, I actually started taking those for my hormone levels. Nice. And of course, to, to heal anything, you have to fix the gut first. Mm-hmm. So the doctor that are, she's an acupuncturist um, that I was working with at Radiant Wonder, that it's a company out of California, um, she put me on herbs for my digestion first before we started working on hormone levels. And so not even like having the intention of helping with my SIBO, it helped with my SIBO. Very cool. Now, have you like gone and eaten a bunch of broccoli or kale to test to see if your, if your symptoms are gone, if you, if this has been fixed? Oh yes, I have. And I have not had any sort of symptoms whatsoever from any food in probably two months. Very cool. And what, just to give the image for people who don't, who've never experienced um, small intestinal bacterial or fungal overgrowth or candida, um, what were the symptoms that you had? What were the digestive issues that you were having before you realized that um, you, you had small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? Before I realized it was just belching and gas and bloating after almost every single meal, I actually thought that my back was so round that my stomach just stuck out naturally. I forgot what it was like not to be bloated. And then once I found out that I did have SIBO, the reason you know my symptoms started getting so bad was actually I started getting abdominal pain after I ate and that Mm. was after every single meal and my bloating got significantly worse my gas got significantly worse but definitely abdominal pain bloating gas were the most common symptoms for me excellent and then now what is it like when you when you eat food what's your digestion now any symptoms no uh my digestion has never been so strong uh no bloating whatsoever no gas um and I can eat I can eat any food. I don't choose to. Um, I would say dairy is the only thing that still bothers me, but dairy bothered me since I was little. So right. um, no no other symptoms with any food. Awesome. Well, Cassie, that's so that's so great and, and so great for the listeners to hear because I think a lot of people are walking around with some level of dysbiosis, especially if we've been on antibiotics for any length of time, we could have developed dysbiosis or candida, or as um, I've had uh, experts on the show come on and talk about small intestinal fungal overgrowth, which is virtually unheard of in the medical field still. And, um, and yet 
it, it, so there's very few tests for it. Um, and yet, you know, people can experience, eat a seemingly healthy diet full of fruits and vegetables and experience horrible gas and belching, especially like upper, the gas in the upper area, like right below the tummy, because that's, you know, where the intestines are, where the small intestines are. And, um, and just uh, almost feel like you're pregnant with, with all the gas. And of course, if we're not uh, digesting our food correctly, we're not absorbing it. If we're not absorbing it, then our body's starving. Uh, for nutrition. And, uh, and then we go downhill from there. So I'm just, I'm so, so happy that you found this and you got to the point where you can, um, your body's making healthy hormones. It's digesting and absorbing your own food. You've got your brain back. You've got your sleep back. You've got your energy back. You must feel like a whole new person. <laughs> I am a whole new person. Most definitely. It's been an incredible year for me. And I, like I said, I, I actually didn't know that I was so sick until I started making changes and understanding how I was supposed to feel, um, you know, on supplements, on, on a more plant-based diet, um, on, you know, or making changes for my stress and all of these different things. Like once I realized how I'm supposed to feel, it's just like this most incredible feeling and I never want to go back. Mm, that's beautifully said. Yeah, a lot of people say, I don't need supplements. I eat healthy. And But, you know, if you're missing a few, you don't even know. You become habituated and you don't even know how good it could get. And uh, it's like, I'm healthy, but you need four coffees a day. You know, <laughs> I've, my, <laughs> yes, my, my husband and I yeah. are coffee free now. And, and um, it's just really interesting that we you know, that urge to go for that cup of coffee. And it's like, wait, now I got to sit with my body and go, what's going on? Like, did I take care of you today? Did I drink enough water? Did I eat, you know, enough food? Did I take my supplements? Like, did I do the things to reduce stress? And, you know, what did I, you know, what am I missing? And so a lot of times running to that second cup of coffee, we're ignoring those signals. The body's saying like, I'm dehydrated or I'm, you know, not, I'm missing certain nutrients. Um, or I need some rest or I need some fun in my life or I'm missing love and hugs. Like <laughs> the body's trying to say something and we're just going for a second cup of coffee. Um, kind of like you'd go for a Tylenol for every headache, but if you get a he headache every day, you know, we're clearly missing something and, and we don't want to mask those symptoms. So going for that stimulant like sugar at 3 PM because we're feeling hungry and tired or energy drink or coffee, that's going to mask those symptoms. Um, and make it so that we can't have that healthy relationship with the body and listening to what the body, the body needs. And that's what you're doing, which is, it's so cool. Cause you can turn around and teach us, teach, um, all your, uh, your wonderful followers, uh, in your Facebook group and your, your coaching clients, you can teach us how to continue to deepen and strengthen that relationship with the body, listening to the body. So yeah, I love I love the direction you're going. This is awesome. Yeah, thank you. Definitely removed all the band-aids and figured out how to listen and tune in myself. So I really appreciate that. You've talked about the supplements. Um, what did you notice in your life when you added the supplements? So I know you were changing your diet. You're changing a lot of things. But what did you get out of incorporating the supplements um, that was different from changing the food in your life? 100% within 48 hours, it was my energy levels and my sleep. And I've never experienced anything like it because I've tried quite a few supplements in my life. And I took, I started taking these and just would sleep like a baby at night. And like you said, you said this a lot, like you were jumping out of bed on day five. That happened to me on day two. I was just flying out of bed, like waking up smiling too. My mood yes. was better. The, <laughs> the way I managed stress was better. It was just incredible. And it happened almost overnight and just absolutely blew my mind. That is awesome. I love it. That's That was exactly my experience. And all my clients say, the most common thing they say within the first few weeks of being on these supplements is more energy, more mental clarity, better sleep. 
across the board, no matter what their problem was or how long they had their problem (laughs) or how sick they were. Because the body, and what I love about these supplements is that it's the 90 essential nutrients the body needs, and a lot of them we're missing from our food because the farming practices, they don't remineralize the soil. So we don't get all the trace minerals we need. And something simple like selenium and and chromium, things that help the thyroid function, prevent breast cancer, um, recycle the body's glutathione, uh, the list goes on and on, and chromium supports the the receptors, uh, from insulin receptors to work correctly with glucose. So when we're chromium deficient, we end up creating um, uh, basically blood sugar imbalance. And I've seen people reverse blood sugar issues just by adding the mineral supplements because that was a symptom of mineral deficiency. So a lot of times people are walking around minerally deficient. If they start taking them and they start getting energy, well, boom, you, your body doesn't, you know, if your body is minerally deficient and you take minerals and then you get energy from them, it's because you're minerally deficient. So everyone I've worked with has seen some level of improvement. And that just goes to show that everyone's walking around with some form of mineral deficiency because we can't get it from our food. It's very difficult to, which is really yeah. frustrating. It's really frustrating because... You go to an MD, they're going to use their tools, and their tools are drugs and surgery. And they're not going to see, unless that MD is taking extensive training and gone the route of holistic medicine, they're not going to see a nutrient deficiency unless it's like scurvy, like something super common. But they won't see that the mineral deficiency. You go to a naturopath, however, or you go to a health coach, or you go to a functional medicine practitioner... These people are trained in seeing and helping people to come back into balance. So it's really, really exciting. How many months have you been on the supplements? Yeah, I've been on them since April. So cool. Yeah, I can so, do that math. Nice. No, no <laughs> less than a year. It's it's fantastic. Yes. I love it. I love it. And yeah, that's um, really interesting about the chromium too. I yep. did not realize that. I didn't realize like that would be such a game changer mm-hmm. for blood sugar as I know my blood sugar was really out of whack, so mm. I'm sure that was one big reason why my energy level was so low. Right. Well, so uh, you, you, we can wiki this. There was a scientist in the 50s, the 1950s, that could turn uh, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, on and off in rats by removing chromium from their feed, so essentially starving them of chromium. And then add, and then they get diabetes eventually after you bec- make them make a bunch of rats chromium deficient. And then he'd add chromium back and they would no longer be diabetic and they'd have the same feed, you know, other like same calories, the same carbs and everything, um, you know, balanced diet for a rat. He would just remove that trace mineral. And that's one of 16 minerals the body, the, the cell uses to make the insulin receptor work with glucose. So that's incredible. Right. And so we can have, we can eat, let's say we ate five bananas, right? Because we're starving. We just ran a marathon. We ate five bananas. The blood sugar has risen in the blood, but it's not in the cell. So we're still starving. So our body is still starving. The blood sugar rises. The pancreas makes insulin. The insulin goes to every single cell, all the 37.2 trillion cells in the body, and attaches on to the receptor to say to the cell, okay, cell, it's time to open that little trap door on the other side of your cell and let some glucose in. Um, So it's kind of like it attaches to the door and rings the doorbell. The problem is on the inside of the cell, the signal will not go across the cell and and to the the trap door to open up the, uh, to let the glucose in if the minerals are deplete, if there's not enough minerals. If you know, if you've ever seen, or you can Google this, a synaptic gap, what that means is there's two neurons, two brain cells or nerve cells. And um, across, across, at the beginning and end of every nerve cell is a gap between there's a space between each nerve cell in our body and that's called the synaptic gap and how the brain sends signals through the brain and through the body like down your arm for example to make your hand move minerals have to cross that synaptic gap so so you know something like um magnesium and uh, calcium are used every single nanosecond in your body, in your brain, in your muscles. In order to contract a muscle, you need to have calcium. And to relax a muscle, you need to have magnesium. 
So we we don't know the extent. I mean, there's just we're just scratching the surface in terms of our understanding of the the role that nutrition plays in our life. But if we grow up on pop tarts, I mean, there's just no way we're going to get all the nutrients we need, and we can't out supplement a bad diet. But even if we eat the healthiest diet in the world, we could still, and this is the this is the crux, we could eat the healthiest diet in the world and still be minerally deficient. That's why I believe that supplementing is so important, but we should supplement a good diet. So I'm really happy that you that you um, chose to work with Jen at Take Your Supplements and um, and that you chose to get on that and, and everything else that you're doing. So um, you shifted your diet. You, took, you started taking the supplements. You said that you changed your environment. Can you talk about that? What, what changes in your environment did you notice made, made a really big difference in your health journey? Uh, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Well, definitely, one, the products that I was using, mm. I switched all of my soaps and lotions and um, you know, laundry detergent and mm. all of that stuff. I started uh, using more natural products. That was a huge wake up call for me. And let's see what else I, well, I noticed that I was a lot more aware of my stressors. So in my job and in my relationships, I was a lot more aware of when my stress level was rising, when my cord, when the cortisol was like rushing through my veins, I swear I could feel my cortisol. Mm -hmm. And so trying the best I can to minimize those stressors and to manage that stress, you know, it's not going to go away, but how I perceive stress is something that I can control. So I started incorporating meditation and yoga and um, journaling and reading and actually taking time for myself. I was always, always, always rushing from task to task, never slowing down, never taking time for myself. I was over exercising and just basically stressing my body out every minute of the day unless I was sleeping. So my body was in a sympathetic state at all times so finally giving it some time to rest and to get back in this parasympathetic state or this rest and digest or feed or breed state was incredible for me and I hands down definitely one of the reasons that I've been able to balance out my hormones because I, I did not have adrenal fatigue but my cortisol was extremely high so if I kept going down the route that I was, I would have eventually, uh, I would have eventually gotten adrenal fatigue. So mm -hmm. changing my environment as in changing the way I perceive stress in a way, I guess. I love it. The way that you perceive stress, that you, you shifted the way you perceive stress. Can you talk a bit about that? How, like, what did you do to shift how you perceive your stress? Yes. Uh, meditation and journaling for sure were huge game changers for me because when we meditate we're breathing and we're breathing and then our mind runs off and thinks about something else and the job is to get our thoughts like back to our breath and doing that every single morning I was able to bring that into my day. So mm -hmm. whenever I was feeling stressed at work or someone said something that upset me, I was I was all of a sudden just without thinking starting to bring my mind back to my breath and breathing, deep belly breathing actually triggers the parasympathetic nervous system. So it helps you to relax, it helps cortisol to decrease. So I guess I just started uh, building up my tool belt with all of these different ways to handle my stress. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, stress just wasn't as big of a deal to me anymore. It's still in my life, but I don't freak out whenever something stressful happens now. I'm a lot more aware and um, able to to take or to use these tools that I have uh, whenever I need them. And like I said, meditation and um, journaling were two huge ones, but I also 
another big one for me is just getting outside and taking a short walk for five or 10 minutes or taking a hot shower. There's just all of these things that I found that work for me to decrease my cortisol level. When you started journaling, what did you learn that really surprised you? Uh, uh, definitely just stuff from my past that I had no clue still bugged me. And, um, I would say I just learned a lot about myself during that time. Um, like what I just became more aware of my habits, my thoughts, my thought patterns, and, um, why I was perceiving different situations and the way that I did, if that makes any sense Mm -hmm. at all. (laughs) I'm trying to think of an example, but, um, well, it's very personal. I mean, I understand, but so what you're saying is that you began to see events differently. So, you know, we could, you and I could go to a movie together and like, let's say we went to see the Grinch, right? Because that's in the theaters right now. And, um, because we have different filters, unconscious filters that make it so that we don't experience the same thing. You know, I could be sitting there upset that, you know, I don't think that Cumberpatch should be the Grinch. And, you know, I think it should be the other guy. And, uh, you know, and I could be, you know, thinking about different things and seeing it from a different perspective. And you could be having a like wonderful experience. And we could both walk out of there feeling like we saw the complete, like opposite movies. Um, we need to remember that going into any conflict with someone we're the person we're, or the people that we're having a conflict with are seeing the situation from a totally different perspective. And it's not about being right or wrong because the world is not black and white, but it is definitely going to help if we get out of our head and out of our opinions (laughs) and get out of our shoes and start seeing the world either from that third person perspective of kind of going, okay, I kind of get why everyone has their own opinion here. Or if we start putting ourselves in other people's shoes and trying to understand how is it possible that they see it from this angle? Because we are governed by whether we like it or not, all of our past and the good or good at the good and the bad. But the more we do that self-awareness check that you're doing through, through journaling, the more that we can grow and become mature in those instances where if a conflict comes up, we can go, okay, well, you know what? Now I need to step outside myself. I, cause it's really, it's easy to feel righteous and to feel right. <laughs> it's kind of juicy to feel right in a situation. Um, but that doesn't help us grow or resolve anything. And, um, and by getting in someone else's shoes and having that sort of bigger perspective, um, it helps us to go, well, You know, why do I feel this way? And why does this person feel this way? And, you know, what do we ultimately all want? You know, we want to, we want to get to a point where we have resolution. So what can we do to, to bring that together? And, um, another thing is slowing down because like we start talking to someone, uh, like a family member where we have a long history with them. It's really easy to get triggered and we start fighting with them over nothing. And that fight is actually what we realize is like from in the past. Right. But when you do journaling, I love they're talking about this, that it allows us to slow down enough to start to go, oh, you know, I'm not really upset with her, but I am kind of feeling like um, I just started that fight we had three three Christmases ago and I'm bringing it, bringing it into now. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's um, it makes you curious about mm. the way that you approach situations and the way that you feel about things. I'd say it's it makes you curious how you react to things and how other people react to things. And I would definitely agree that it helps you to kind of step outside of this box, this way that you think and to approach things from different perspectives. How do you journal? So let's say a listener's never journaled before and they're like, what do I start? Like dear diary? Like, so how do you journal? (laughs) Um, I, Sometimes I like give myself um, like little prompts, uh, but I mainly just, I would say it's best to do in the morning before your brain starts running and um, your thoughts go all over the place. You're very grounded and centered in the morning. There's not a lot going on. 
So whatever you start to journal, like whatever that may be, like if you just sit there with a piece of paper and a pen and just like even just saying like, talk about how you feel in that moment. Like, okay, I feel like really excited today. Why do I feel excited today? Just like however you're feeling in that moment, like just start writing, put that pen and paper in front of you and stuff will come out. (laughs) (laughs) So like our minds are always racing. So Mm. it's, I, I just love doing it in the morning when I'm grounded, when I'm centered and kind of just seeing what spills out of my brain. It, it never fails to surprise me. Neat. Very cool. Um, and so how long do you think you've been journaling for? Probably since May or since I started IIN, I yeah. would say. IIN has definite, was definitely one of the reasons I started journaling. <laughs> and how long, so you say you think you started meditating around that time as well? Yes. Yeah. I, I started journaling and meditating uh, probably within two weeks of each other. I love that you noticed that those very simple practices really helped you decrease stress along with all the other things you mentioned, like walking and taking hot showers and taking time for yourself. Um, but it also helps us to grow emotionally, um, which I love. Anything that helps us to slow down and see it from a new perspective is so good. Can you give tips to the listeners who have never meditated before? So some beginning tips and, and what does it feel like? after you're done meditating, so you you haven't even, you've been meditating for several months, but not even a year yet, right? So you, you definitely have several months on us, those who have not ever meditated. Um, but you're not like a guru where we were like, you know, sometimes when you, you you meet someone who's been meditating for like 20 years, it kind of seems unobtainable, right? Like it just seems so far away and, um, it's kind of intimidating. But when you meet someone who's been doing it for a few months and really is seeing benefit, then I like I like learning from people like you because it's attainable. It's something I could do meditation for the next six months. That's cool. Um, what kind of tips do you have for us? Those who've never meditated, kind of walk us through the process. And then why? Like, what does it feel like after you're done meditating? And and also, how long do you meditate? Mm-hmm. Yes, these are all really good questions. And the answer to them is that it depends. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So whatever is going to work for you, timing wise, whether that be in the morning or at night and for how long, however, that may fit into your schedule. So for me, I found that I can't really go past 10 minutes right now at this time in my life because I have a lot going on. So 10 minutes works for me. That's what I can commit to. But even just as little as three minutes Mm -hmm. can be super beneficial and get us out of that sympathetic state and into a more relaxed state, just three minutes alone. So I would say whatever works for you is what is going to be the best. And starting out, I found it very helpful to do guided meditations because I had no clue what the heck I was doing. I tried to do it on my own and I just thought about other stuff the whole time. I <laughs> got up after like a few minutes and was like, I'm not good. To, I'm not doing this again. This is stupid. <laughs> um, so I found that an app called Calm was amazing for me. And there is a, you do pay like an annual subscription, but you do get um, seven days free if you just want to try it out. So I did like the seven day free trial and then ended up doing it because I love it so much. But there's a ton of guided meditations on there. They're all about 10 to 12 minutes long. So they're fairly manageable. And there's just different like challenges on there. Like there's like a seven days of gratitude or seven days of calming anxiety or seven days of handling stress, like that sort of thing. So those are very, very helpful to do just starting out. Um, And then I eventually moved into just my own meditation. I don't really do guided meditation much anymore. And I'll just put on like a yoga meditation playlist from my Spotify and sit in a chair. And I used to set a timer. Now I just kind of let myself go, but set a timer for five or 10 minutes. And then um, I always start off with four deep breaths. I do four seconds of inhaling 
with your belly. So making sure that you fill your belly up first and then your chest. We're taught to breathe with our chest, but belly breathing is how we were, how we innately are supposed to breathe. Um, so four seconds in, holds for seven seconds, and then eight seconds out. And I do that four times. And then I just go into a more natural breath. And, um, and yeah, and, and just kind of let my mind go, but always being aware that my goal is to get back to the breath, but I don't judge my thoughts. I simply just notice them. I remain curious throughout that time. And um, it's usually some really creative, awesome ideas pop into my head. Sometimes I'll like put a little journal next to my chair and write them down really quick and go back to my meditation. But we can we can't be creative if we're in this very stressful state. So I find that meditation has really boosted my creativity as well. Nice. I love that you you it's um like training wheels. You use the guided meditations through calm. And um, also people can find, I'm sure, tons of guided meditations on YouTube, um, lots of free ones, but the app is so clean and easy. Um, and you know that there aren't many commercials. <laughs> so you don't want to be in the middle of a guided meditation, then like the YouTube switches over to some commercial <laughs> or something, get that in your subconscious. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool. And then that was your training wheels. And then you got comfortable with it. And then you just switched over naturally to being, you know, still and you might find that one day you switch you switch into no music. Um, there's something that happens when you're in si complete silence. Also, uh, when you get really deep into meditation, you can begin to hear your own chakras. You can actually start to hear the humming of energy in your body. And you can start to see li the light in your body um, with your eyes closed because it's your third eye. So that's really like, you know, far down the road, but there's some really neat things that you can experience in meditation, but take it one step at a time. Also, a lot of people think that meditation is always being silent and there's something that happens. You First, you want to master or get really good at, because mastering can take years, but get really good at being still. And, you know, if the thoughts come into your mind, you just go, okay, you know, you're going to think you thought we're going to have an empty mind now and, and getting calm and calm is good. But, um, once you've done that for a while, there's something really neat that happens. You meditate for a few minutes, you get really calm, you get into this um, different brainwave, and then you can commune with yourself in a way that allows you to solve complex problems in your life. So have you ever heard of someone, the, the saying, well, let me meditate on it? I've, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I hang around with the kind of people that are like, you know, it's a business <laughs> decision and they go, let me, let me meditate on that. And I'm like, what does that actually mean? Well, it's because people who meditate um, long enough get to this point where let's say you sit, you know, in, qu in quiet for five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, however, whatever it takes you to do. And then you get to a point where you're in this still point where you can bring that question. So let's say it's a financial decision or let's a relationship problem or parenting problem, whatever it is that if you can't, if you're, you're too wrapped up in your emotions and the conflict in your past in this issue, you can bring it to your meditation to resolve. And so when sort of your when you get to that really calm place, you can then start thinking about it, but you're thinking about it in a way that is in such a peaceful state and you, the, your brain waves are in such an, um, a higher level, a higher functioning state that you um, really think clearly. And that's a great place to get those sort of um, fly on the wall perspectives where you can step outside yourself and outside of your emotional attachment to the outcome and start to see new ways of solving it and new possibilities that you hadn't seen before. And so meditation becomes not only like you said, to decrease stress, to support healthy hormone levels, um, help the digestive system, because again, you're decreasing stress, taking the body out of that sympathetic nerve system response, um, and also increasing your creativity. But you're also, you can also use it as a tool to um, gain resolution and do complex problem solving in your life. And I love that you mentioned journaling and meditation because those things can come together. You can journal and the things that you can't quite figure out, like why is it that I 
have this conflict in, that I keep reoccurring in my life? Or why do I keep, you know, having this anger keep come up or have this, you know, same problem keep come up in multiple relationships or why can't I enforce boundaries or whatever these problems that you start to see that come out in your journaling, you can take those problems into your meditation. And then once you get to that really calm place, that still point, um, you can work on that problem with yourself. And and you may have, because you're in such a calm state, your 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 mind is so focused on this one thing rather than jumping around. Um, you may find you have some great creativity in, 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 in gaining resolution and solving problems. So people use meditation for personal growth, for emotional work, um, for many reasons, but it's, a, I love that you said, basically it's like the training wheels start with an app and do it for three minutes. Um, if everyone tried that, if that was our homework and we all tried that and we just did it for a few weeks, we will all see great benefits. Um, so many people are afraid of it because we're just not exposed to it in this culture. You know, I guess it's more and more common, but if we were, if we all were all born and raised in India, it would be like no problem, you know, in a culture that is uh, way more into it, right? Or, or there's other, you know, cultures where it's uh, very, very common to meditate. So consider that um, it's a, the body's innate ability to get into a, a state of deep problem solving. And, um, and we're just utilizing you know, the neuroscience, utilizing the brain in, um, in a capacity we're not used to, which is really, really cool. Yeah, I agree. And I've never heard someone explain meditation so beautifully. Oh. And that was <laughs> so perfect. Well, I gotta and say it's because, um, all, well, all, obviously everyone I've interviewed and the you know, IIN and all that, but also one of my best friends is, um, a meditation expert and I can't help but learn from him. And I've had him on the show once. I'm actually gonna have him on the show again. His name's Forrest Knutson. And, um, and he has figured some really cool stuff out that makes complex meditation simple. So he, he teaches very simple tools to get into a really deep state. So I would say um, that I, I never knew that about meditation, that it was somewhere where there's actually an, an end goal. Because some people think it's the end goal is just to have an empty mind, but that's not the point. The empty mind's the beginning, the beginning of meditation. So you got it. So it's just you still have the training wheels on if you're just getting to a point where your mind's empty because your mind can never be fully empty. Thoughts are always going to want to come in, but get, but getting calm is just the first step. Then you get to this point where you you connect with your higher self. You connect with your your entire brain. It's really awesome. So um, you know, and we're on this journey together. So it takes it takes time, but it takes practice. And it takes practice. So start with the calm app and doing it for three minutes in a guided meditation and see how far you get. Right and just like you in a matter of months, you're now doing it without guided meditation. And in a few more months, you know, you're just going to keep seeing deeper and deeper progression as you go. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited for it. I recently started setting intentions before my meditation. So I've been noticing that ability to problem solve, like you mentioned, has significantly increased since I started, you know, bringing that problem to my meditation and then clearing my head of thoughts and seeing what seeing what comes and noticing my feelings I, I would say meditation is a is an incredible way to connect to your intuition yes and that's what I let guide me so that's probably my favorite part about it is connecting back to my feelings and my intuition when you say intuition um you know I've had some guests on the show talk about sort of that we have three brains that we have a head brain we're all used to thinking that thinking that the head brain is the only thing we have but we also have a heart brain and we have a gut brain. So the, the enteric uh, brain, and that's where like our intuition, when we say, you know, my gut, my gut said, do this, or, you know, that's our intuition. Do you ever meditate on um, health decisions? Like what, you know, what diet or food or lifestyle choices do I need to make? Or what, you know, supplements should I be on? Do you ever like bring that to your intuition? Uh, yeah, I actually do. Just because I'm still experimenting. I'm still at this time in my life where I I'm figuring out what's best for my body and probably not. I haven't, I haven't meditated on supplements, but I have meditated on, um, you know, like what kind of balance am I seeking here? Like what does my body need right now? Um, and just trying to understand its cues and also understand my like hunger fullness scale at the time I meditate because I meditate before breakfast, so how hungry am I right now? What's my breakfast 
going to look like? What do I actually feel like eating? So kind of um, some call it an intuitive eating. I would say meditation has helped help me with the ability to eat intuitively. Very cool. So listening to the body and what it actually needs rather than maybe emotionally, because emotionally I would have cupcakes for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> me too. But intuitively <laughs> I would have that green smoothie for breakfast. So, you know, maybe that donut and coffee wouldn't be your choice if we listen to the, um, and listen to that gut, the, the, our gut or intuition when it said what I, my body really wants and needs is a smoothie. Um, so yes, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I need to do that more. I do that usually like during the day, but then at night, um, it's just sometimes it's like, I, I, I go, I kind of have that, like, am I hungry or am I just like bored or like, what am I doing? Like, what do I want to eat? Do I need to eat? So yeah, I've got to, you know, check with the gut more, check with the intuition more. Cause, um, you know, we just, we think we got to just cook every few hours or just eat a meal every few hours. But, um, sometimes our body wants to skip a meal or sometimes our body wants four meals a day. You know, we, but listening, listening is the key and getting in touch with it is the key. Cause we were trained to not listen to our body. When we went to school, you know, you ate at lunchtime, you know, you, you went to the bathroom when, you know, for the most part, when it was break or if you work in a factory or work at a job where, no, you, you can't go to the bathroom until your break. You know, it's every four hours you get to go to the bathroom. And so we stop listening to what the body needs and go on a schedule. We eat on a schedule. We go to the bathroom on a schedule. And, um, and so we kind of just become numb to what the body is actually saying it needs. But, um, when we want to bring our body back into balance, listening to what it needs is a, is a key is absolutely key. I love it. So you started working with people and, um, you know, you're still doing your IIN, but as part of the program, you take on clients and you have a holistic group. So I know you don't have a website yet, which is perfectly fine because you have a Facebook group, which is so cool. So we're going to make sure the link to that is in the show notes of the podcast. It's called Holistic Hustlers. What would people get from joining your Facebook group? So my Facebook group is all about healing your relationship with food. And I do live trainings in there on a weekly basis um, over a lot of different topics because it is a holistic group. So sometimes I'll t talk about more scientific topics like uh, the gut and hormones and, um, you know, uh, like innately, like why we um, feel the need to, to binge on food. Mm. Um, but then I also explore the emotional side as well. And then I talk about intuitive eating and um, meditation and all of the, the woo-woo side, as <laughs> some people okay. say as well. Um, and then I'll, I'll do posts in there um, you know, th two, three times a week along with my live trainings, but it's just a, it's a community for women who have suffered with any, um, eating disorder in the past, or they have, or they're just sick of diets. They've tried every fad diet out there, or they're just lost and confused about how and what to eat. So, I, I do focus a lot on healing your relationship with food and then finding nourishment beyond the plate as well. Nourishment beyond the plate. That sounds delicious. So we can all go <laughs> join Holistic Hustlers, the Facebook group. You also have a great Instagram presence. You're at Holistically Cass. That's C-A-S-S. -S. That'll also be in the show notes of the podcast today. Cassie, it was awesome having you on the show and thank you for sharing your journey. I definitely going to want to have you back um, after you've graduated and you've got more experience, like you just as you continue to grow, because you're the you're like me, you're always learning. And so it'll just be fun to have you back on, like maybe once every six months or once a year to continue to learn from you as you go on this wonderful journey. Uh, the best health coaches are those who healed their own body with food and nutrition and lifestyle changes, because you can bring so much experience and empathy to the table. So definitely I'm going to keep my eye on you. I know you are gearing up to be an absolutely amazing, um, best-selling author <laughs> kind, of, <laughs> kind of health coach. So congratulations uh, on your journey. It's, it's really, really positive. 
is there anything that you'd like to say to the listeners, especially since you've listened to so many episodes, you're talking to your tribe here. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say to the listeners to wrap up today's interview? Yeah. Um, I would just like to say that whatever health issue that you are struggling with, no matter how lost you feel, you know, if you're in that stage where you have no clue what's going on with your body or whether you know what's going on and you're taking steps to heal it, like just keep going because your body can get itself well by itself and it's super powerful. It's just about you taking the time to tune in, to slow down and to listen to what it needs and to actually follow through and give it what it needs. Beautifully said. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Can't wait to have you back. Yes, thank you. It was awesome and I can't wait to come back on the show. Are you going to optimize your health? Are you looking to get the best supplements at the lowest price? for high quality supplements and to talk to someone about what supplements are best for you, go to takeyoursupplements.com and one of our fantastic true health coaches will help you pick out the right supplements for you that are the highest quality and the best price. That's takeyoursupplements.com. Takeyoursupplements.com. That's takeyoursupplements.com. Be sure to ask about free shipping and our awesome referral program.